Hey everyone, I'm Joy. And I'm Jason. And welcome to episode one of our podcast, Over the Hill. Over the Hill is a podcast about our journey to cycling fitness, having started riding five years ago and just getting coached for less than a year. We also have a YouTube channel called Joy and Jason Rides, which is a visual recap of our races and events. Sometimes we can't really go in depth with our experiences in our videos, so hopefully this podcast can fill the gap. In today's episode, we'll be talking about how we got into cycling, from Jason's refusal to shift gears, to Joy's search of a cranberry bog. Believe me, it does end with us improving our cycling fitness. So sit tight and enjoy the episode. So Jason, let's just get started with how you first got into cycling. What kind of bike did you get? So so our first um, bikes that that we both got were, uh, I I don't remember if, were we engaged yet at that time or were we just starting to date? I don't remember. I I don't even remember what kind of bike you got. um, Something from Dick's Sporting Yeah. (laughs) Wasn't yours though too? Yes, like, both of them yeah, were. Yeah, we, we both, I think we were just ha- started dating a little, for a little while, and we um, wanted to go riding. Neither of us had a bike, so we just went to the local Dick Sporting Goods and got some hybrid bikes. Um, trying to remember what mine was. Uh, I think it was a Schwinn um, hybrid bike. What was yours? I can't even remember. Uh, I'm going to say it was... Uh, was it an Ashiki? Oh, yeah, that's why. Right. It was an Ashiki hybrid bike. And at the time when I, when we went to Dick's, I thought it was a pretty badass performance bike. It looked like it was uh, for whatever reason. And if you guys look up, I can't remember exactly the model of it, but it's definitely not performance bike. Uh, it was definitely a hybrid bike. And it was one of those things where you can like shift when you're shifting, you're using the handlebars like you. There's a little turn. It's like a dial that you turn like either you twist it to away from you or towards you to shift. Uh, and it was like a, a three by setup. Uh, still wasn't any good, even though it was a three by setup up hills. Yeah, and I remember I used to hate the the shifter. I I hated this shifter. It was like this, it, it, like Joy was trying to describe it there, but it's you know it's almost like a it's like connected to the uh, to the flat handlebar. You know, the handlebars are kind of like a mountain bike handlebar, and the the shifter is is like a like thing that you turn that's like right near the grip of the handlebar, and um, I hated that shifter, so I, I pretty much decided I wasn't going to use it, and um, I, I basically ended up riding that bike as a fixed gear. I, I don't think I ever shifted the thing. Yeah, and we did this. There's this short loop. It's like a six mile loop um, outside of our neighborhood. You know, just around I want to say the block, but it's not really the block. And there's this hill. It's not a steep hill. It's just like, you know, the normal hill that you go up on. And I remembered when I first rode up that hill, I was so out of shape and he like heavy breathing. I didn't know. I don't think I even got to the top and I wound up like throwing up on the side of the road because I was going so hard on this bike. But that was just me riding by myself. And then I decided to take Jason along with me. And because he hated shifting, he decided up the hill, he was just going to ride it out of the saddle standing. And that's what he did. So if it was a steep hill, he'd just ride out of the saddle. And then if it was downhill, he'll just, you know, stay seated. And he also did refuse to wear tight, like bib shorts. So he wore these like baggy, uh, I'm like, they're just like windbreaker pants and he's riding around in this not shifting gears. <laughs> yeah. This was back when at that time I was more into strength training. That's primarily what I did for exercise was 
strength training and then a little bit of running, but the, the running was, was more of like sprinting. Um, you know, I was kind of into CrossFit type of workouts. And so I was just in this mindset that I don't really need to shift gears. I'll just like muscle through it. And, um, yeah, probably not the best thing to do, but I really had basically no knowledge of how to, how to do proper cycling. It was just, I was just some guy riding a bike that really didn't belong on a bike at the time. Yeah. And I thought that was like such a great workout because we did the loop and that was like one loop. So it's like six miles. And by the time we got home, I was pretty out of breath. And I think that was, I'm going to guess like it took us, I don't know, 45 minutes or so to do that whole loop. And I was pretty exhausted. So that was like my workout. Well, if I remember correctly, Joy, I think you have the, the QOM on that, this hill that you're talking about. She, she later on got the QOM on that when, once she started, you know, riding with a proper road bike yeah. and did a little bit of training. Yeah, I think once we got like a serious road bike, I think that was when I started to uh, like this was like after we got Strava and I found out that there's these things called QOMs and that you can compete against other people virtually. And uh, so, yeah, that was like a couple of years after this adventure. <laughs> Speaking of adventures... Um, well, oh yes. Yeah, so was there anything else that you want to add to that story about your first experience riding a bike together? Um, well, actually I believe, see, I, I'm trying to remember now if that was actually our first, our, our very first experience riding a bike together. I don't know if it was when we went to Cape Cod or if it was when we got these hybrid bikes. I, I had, I can, I, I'm pretty sure we rode the bikes first before we went to the Cape. Like, I think I wanted to ride the bike beforehand before like trying it out and riding it around the Cape. No, no. But I think the first time we went to the Cape, we, we we've made a, several trips to the, to the Cape. So it's sometimes it's hard to remember which one was which, but the oh. very, the very first one that we went to the Cape uh, when we we took a ferry out to Nantucket, I think we rented yeah, bikes. Yeah, I remember now. Yes, from a shop there. Yeah, I don't think we brought those bikes with us. Yes, we did rent bikes at this bike shop, and it was one of those like beach cruiser basket bikes. <laughs> and uh, we did not have. I didn't know anything about a Wahoo head unit or a Garmin head unit. I was using. <laughs> I think I was using like a TomTom, -tom, which was back like years ago. This is what we use for to get directions when we drive to different places. And that's what I used because there was no way for us to navigate around the island. Oh, I thought you were using your Blackberry for some reason. I was not. No, no. I did have a Blackberry and that does come in handy later on in this story. Okay. But, um... At the time, no, I put the I put the Tom Tom or whatever it was that I had inside the basket and I kind of just used that as it was like bouncing around in the basket and then it would say, you know, it would it would talk, it would say, make a left turn. And so like I would follow that and I think you were behind me following along. And it was helpful because once we like it was there was like a, a sidewalk or a like a I must say a bike lane. I'm not sure if it was a bike lane or a sidewalk, but we just kind of rode on the sidewalk. And uh, I was nervous. I remembered when we were riding, I was nervous about crossing the road because there was like an intersection or a couple of lights. So I was a little nervous about doing that, but I figured I'll just use the, um, you know, the they had like crosswalks. So we just kind of rode over the crosswalks and we press that button that allows like the pedestrians to cross. Um, yeah, that was that was uh, the first part of Nantucket. And then the second part was when, uh, as we were riding, we decided to ride to the other end of Nantucket. So it's a, 
if you're not familiar with Nantucket as a small island, and I can't even tell you how big or what the size of the island is, but you can pretty much ride from one end to the next using these little beach cruisers. And it wasn't that hilly. I mean, there was a hill I remember riding out into this golf course at the other end of the island. And then what happened? Um, yeah, so it, it, well, let's, let's put it this way. I mean, we, we were able to ride most of the island and this was like our first time, you know, really riding bikes. I mean, since probably since we were kids, like we were, you know, very, very new to this and we were still able to, to cover most of the island. So it's not, not that it probably wasn't that many miles. Um, but yeah, I remember I, you know, Joy was talking about when we were riding the hybrid bikes, the, the kind of, you know, uh, the kind of kit that I wore for that. Well, it was even worse this time. I think I was wearing, uh, cargo shorts, Skechers sneakers and backward baseball cap and a backpack or something like that. If you're all really interested to know what this looks like, check Jason out, follow him on Strava because it's his profile picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So when we got to the end there, I, for some reason I had in my mind that we wanted to visit the Cranberry Bog. And this was like July. I'm pretty sure it was like in the summertime that we were out there. And I noticed as we were riding back, there was this entrance like it was like a dirt road entrance look like and I thought oh this is probably where the entrance is to the cranberry bog so we decided or I decided Jason followed along to ride into this opening this entrance and it was it started out as being dirt and then slowly it turned into like this sandy like beach sand uh, terrain and the basket bikes couldn't make it through this. So we had to walk parts of it. Um, and I was like thoroughly enjoy enjoying myself throughout this adventure. I call it an adventure. <laughs> it, it started out kind of fun. And then I started getting pretty bad time anxiety. Um, I think this was getting kind of late in the afternoon and uh there were you know, there are certain times where you can catch a ferry back from the island to the main part of the cape and i think the last ferry left you know shortly after it got dark um so it started getting into like the evening territory and we were still uh, we basically got lost searching searching for this cranberry bog. Like we were kind of going through this system of trails that, you know, was basically like, it was basically unrideable on these basket bikes because it's like beach sand. And um, I felt like we were kind of going in circles or like I didn't really know where we were going. All I knew is, you know, we, we couldn't find this cranberry bog. And then eventually we did find it but only to find out that there's no cranberries in it at that time of year yeah we were we didn't realize or i didn't realize at the time until afterwards that jason's uncle was like well cranberries are actually grown in the fall and i kind of laughed because you know we were out there for a couple hours and we didn't find anything but I was totally enjoying myself. And I know Jason was like, I didn't realize until after that Jason was stressing out over the fact that we were lost. But I think I was fine. I felt like I didn't have any, I don't know, for some reason, I didn't feel like I was rushed because I keep thinking I'm like, I'm like Velma from Scooby-Doo who's got like the gadgets and all I had was a Blackberry and it was like a Blackberry. I can't remember if it was like a Blackberry Pearl, but it had internet connection. I remembered like I couldn't find 
proper reception. So I'm like holding it up in the sky to get reception. And I got Google Maps up. And then from there, it was able to point, pinpoint our location. And then I used that to help navigate us out of this <laughs> labyrinth that we got ourselves into. Um, I remember like we were riding for a bit and I kept saying, I remember like just riding for a little bit and then we heard traffic and that meant like we were close to the road. And then finally we found the exit. Yeah. And then I was, I was relieved at that point. You know, I was, I was pretty stressed this, the, the whole time. Once I knew that we were lost and then I realized what time it was and we only had like, I don't know, an hour or two to before the the, the last ferry of the day came through. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of stressed out, but I didn't. This was like early in our relationship and I didn't I didn't want to like show my my stress at the time. Like now that we're married, if this happened again, like I would be like, hey, honey, like, let's go. Like, I'm you know, this is, you know. <laughs> this is bothering me, but I was trying to just sort of go along with things. But then on the inside, I'm like, you know, really stressed out. And I'm like, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be, be late to the ferry. We're going to like get stuck on the Island overnight. Um, yeah. And, um, as we were like riding down to the ferry, I started, well, before that I was starting to get hungry and I remember saying to Jason, it's like, oh, man, all I want is a chocolate cake. And then what did you say? I love you. I don't <laughs> yes, so. you did say that. You were like, oh, man, I love you. And it was I don't know what I was thinking. Like, all I want was a chocolate cake. Um, but, yeah, I think we got to the point where we were pretty stressed. Um, got to the close to the ferry, right? Returned the, the bikes walked over to a nearby restaurant and only ordered dessert. I don't even know if I got chocolate cake or whatever it was, but I remembered it was just dessert that we got. And then Jason was extra stressed at the ferry. There was uh, an ice cream parlor. <laughs> yeah, there there was an ice cream um uh, an ice cream shop like right by the the you know, wharf or I think you call it a wharf where the ferry, you know, comes in and it just happened to still be open. And, you know, we're waiting for the ferry. The ferry's going to be here in like, I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes or, or something. And, you know, we're, uh, so we're waiting for it. And I'm like, man, I could go for some ice cream now too. And, uh, I think joy was like, nah, I'm full. I can't have any ice cream, but, uh, I went ahead and, and got some ice cream. And uh, so, yeah, that was like, that's, I guess that's one way I deal with stress is by eating. And that was a kind of a stressful situation for me, but it turned into, turned into a good memory or a funny memory. So it's all good in the end. This is like the, probably the best story that I love telling because I don't know what it was. It was just like an introduction. And that wasn't like the only time that we've had some rides and we've ridden around the Cape, but that was probably the, the most memorable experience that we've had on the Cape on these bikes. And I love telling that story. Yeah. And in hindsight, it probably shouldn't, I probably shouldn't have been as stressed as I was. I mean, when you think about it, it's, worst what's the worst thing that can happen you get stuck on nantucket overnight you're not like it's a pretty safe place like you're not gonna you're not gonna die out there but i think your uncle tony said that there's really very few choices of places to stay though well yeah i mean we would have had to like basically sleep on a bench or something but you know it's it's not like hey, i guess if there's, you, if there's you, worse things that could have happened yeah i guess if you were to like sleep on a bench anywhere in Nantucket's probably the least dangerous place to sleep on a bench. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I probably uh, got more stressed out than I, than I should have been, but, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the good old time anxiety. So after we've ridden a couple of times on these hybrid bikes, 
I think there was another time where we visited the Cape and we took our hybrid bikes with us and we stayed at his uncle's house, Jason's uncle's house. And they have a place in Ocean Edge Resort, right? I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. And it's right close to the Cape Cod Rail Trail. So we rode the hybrid bikes to this rail trail. And I think it was like 10 miles that we rode. And I remember being like, so like, oh my God, we rode 10 miles. It was like the best thing ever. And I remembered when we were riding back to the condo, there was a woman who like yelled out like on your left. And so I moved over to my left and she went flying past me on her road bike. And I remember thinking, man, I want to be like her. I want to do that. And so, you know, I kept thinking about like, oh, maybe I should get some, a bike like that. Like maybe this bike isn't any good. And so I kind of like that kind of planted the seed of do I maybe I should get a road bike because that would take me to more places and maybe I'll be faster getting there. And so I researched a couple of like road bikes, entry level road bikes, and I found a company uh, from Colorado that does like a direct to consumer kind of business model with road bikes and it's called Tommaso. And I got myself a road bike. It was probably like less than a thousand dollars. It was like an aluminum frame, super entry level. It was like a three by Shimano. I don't even remember what the components were. I still have the road bike. I, I can't seem to get rid of that one but yeah ended up getting that one and that kind of helped jumpstart my I don't know if it was addiction or my my I guess my love for for cycling is that bike and um I remembered it was when Jason was rehabbing his knee injury and so while he was doing that, I decided to go on a few rides on my own. And I remembered doing a metric century on that bike for the first time. And again, I did not have a Wahoo and I didn't know anything about bike computers. I was using my Garmin watch. I uploaded the route that I wanted to take. And then I used that to help me navigate and it was like a 62 mile course. It was all by myself. I remembered I planned out where I was going to stop and the route I was going to take, uh, what I was going to bring. And I thought like that was like the biggest adventure I had. It was like 60 miles or 62 miles and it was a thousand feet of elevation gain. And it was like probably the flattest ride I have ever ridden. I wish I could do that that ride again. Maybe I will someday, but it's probably not the most ideal. Now that I've been riding for a few years now, I probably wouldn't take those roads. But at the time I was like, you know, I was trying to avoid, I didn't, I wasn't trying to avoid hills. I was just trying to avoid them. I was just trying to take the most direct route. And that was what I plotted. And uh, yeah, probably the biggest accomplishment there and I started like riding more and more, um, like more hills. And then you started getting started feeling better with your knee, right? You had surgery. Um, I think you were able to to start to, to start riding, and then we got you your the same brand road bike. <laughs> Yeah, so I kind of got into road cycling um, in, in a way by, I wouldn't say, I don't know if I would say necessity, but it was kind of like that because in 2019, I had a knee injury and I, um, that I had surgery on and I wasn't, wasn't able to do any of the, the stuff that I had previously done, like strength training and, and running. Um, 
I was on crutches for a while. And then when I got off of crutches, you know, the doctor said that you can cycle, but you pretty much can't do anything else right now while the, um, cause the bone still needs to heal. Uh, and so you can't do anything that's high impact, but he said I could do cycling. And, uh, as Joy mentioned, she was, was getting into to road cycling during the few months where I was on the sideline. And so she already had a, had a good, good start going with it and, and knew, you know, she had already learned enough where she knew, um, you know, pretty much the rules of the road and, you know, how to, the, the, the basic skills that you need to, you know, to safely ride a bike on the road. Um, you well, know, she, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I forgot that the, I didn't actually start off that way. I think I went, I rode with a friend who has ridden bikes across this country, I, I think. And she showed me how to be, how to clip in on, in and out of clipless pedals. And, uh, we kind of rode around Lake Warramug here in Connecticut uh, I think it's in like Washington, Connecticut, or it borders a couple of towns. But yeah, we rode there. It's pretty flat. And she showed me how to clip in and out of pe the clipless pedals. And that was before I did the metric century. So the, with the metric century, I think I felt a little bit more confident uh, cl clipping in and out of these pedals. Uh, and I actually, I don't remember where I was going with that, but I wanted to mention that that wasn't my very first ride on this road bike. Um, I had ridden it a couple of times prior to doing the metric century. Yeah. And by the time I was able to start riding with Joy, um, you know, she already knew a fair amount about, um, you know, not, not nearly as much as she knows now, but she knew a decent amount about how to ride. And, um, so, you know, when I found out that I was given clearance to cycle and that was pretty much the only form of exercise that I could do where I felt like I was getting a workout. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give this a try. Cause it's just better than nothing. Even though my, Previous memories of cycling were pretty much, I hate shifting, I hate wearing tight shorts, yet my groin hurts all the time, which, you know, means I probably should have been wearing the tight shorts, but, and, you know, not basketball shorts, but I just, I wasn't into, uh, I wasn't into the, you know, the whole cycling culture yet, so, um, did you use chamois cream on your first? Like, no, I, I mean, I think even once I started using bike shorts, I don't think I was using chamois cream. Uh, and the the first bike shorts that I got were, you know, another another uh, Dick Sporting Goods special that you know pretty yeah. much had minimal <laughs> chamois. I, like it was almost like you, you weren't even wearing anything. Um, so, so yeah, that was, now I forget where I was going with that. Well, we did, I did take you to Lake Waramog. Remember we rode oh, together Oh yeah. and we did this whole, like, catch me if you can, if you guys, uh, follow us on YouTube, there is the, one of the very first videos I think I posted in YouTube was Jason's first ride on this road bike and or I'm not sure if it's the first ride but it's one of his very first few rides on a road bike and we played a game called catch me if you can and I was riding hard and he had to like try to catch me yeah I think so I I ended up getting the same road bike that Joy had the uh Tommaso and you know I basically was just copying what she was doing I I, I knew nothing about riding bikes at this point. Um, so, you know, I was just following, you know, what she did. And she, at the time she was, 
you know, reasonably happy with her bike. And so I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll get the same one. It's not that expensive. Um, and I think I rode it around the neighborhood a few times before we rode together, um, just to kind of, you know, test the knee out. And I think I started out riding it with the, the flat pedals that it comes with, but um, at some point I switched to the clipless pedals and Joy showed me how to, you know, how to, how to use those. Although I did, it, it, I did have to learn probably like most people, I, you know, fell quite a bit trying to, to learn how to unclip and everything. Yeah. It's almost like riding a bike for the first time, you know, it's like, you're still not sure how you're going to balance the bike, but it's, for the, for clipless pedals, it's like you don't know when to to unclip, how to unclip, and you're always afraid of like, oh my god, what if I don't unclip? I'm gonna fall, um, which has happened with me, and it was pretty embarrassing. But <laughs> I think that comes with anybody who's new to to the sport is the clipless pedals is learning how to you know to use it. It's, yeah, so I'll, what I remember about the first few rides that we did together, you know, starting with this ride around Lake Warmug, um, these rides always ended up being like a little bit harder than what I thought they were going to be. Because, you know, the first one we go to Lake Warmug, I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's, it seems pretty easy, nice and flat. And then, um, but, you know, then I got like competitive. I wanted to like, keep up with joy she was going i felt like she was going like pretty fast like in in hindsight she was she was probably going 10 miles an hour and i was going five miles an hour but you know at the time it seemed like she was flying and i was like oh, i want to keep up with her so um do you remember the fuller mountain yeah and, and then the i think like that was like it was probably like the th i don't know probably maybe the third or so time that we rode together um we rode up this road called fuller mountain road in kent and it's kind of a steep climb um like even to this day if if we were to go ride it now there's it, it's not like the steepest thing we've ever ridden i don't remember the the average grade but you know there's definitely pitches that are over 10 percent and um it's one of those climbs that we haven't we haven't done it that many times and it's if we were to go do it now it it wouldn't be easy it's one of those climbs that's never going to be easy um but we did this climb as part of one of the first rides that longer rides that we did i think it i think that day we did I want to say we were doing like a 40 mile ride or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I can't remember, but um, real quick, I just pulled up the stats for Fuller Mountain. It's 1.33 miles with 7.6 average grade. Okay. So there's definitely, in the beginning of that climb, especially, there's, there's definitely grades over 10%. Um, and fortunately, uh, with the with the road bike, um, this Tommaso road bike had a three by chain ring set up. And so it did have like a pretty, the granny gear was pretty, a pretty small chain ring. And I think we had a 34 tooth cassette on there. Um, so the granny gear was, was pretty, was pretty granny. Uh, but, uh, in my, my legs were so weak after coming off of this knee surgery, it's, it's like, um, any muscle that, that I had prior to that was, was lost. Like I really lost a lot of leg muscle. Uh, and so, you know, I felt really weak and fortunately I was willing to use all the different gears, um, with the road bike. I wasn't trying to ride it as a, as a fixed a fixed gear like the hybrid bike because you know the road bike um i found it a lot easier to to shift 
gears. Um, but you know, even using the granny gear on this bike, uh, going up Fuller Mountain was, was really tough. And I think I remember you saying that because you were clipped in, yeah. you were afraid, you were just afraid to fall. And so all you had to do was like, you had to pedal no matter what. Because yeah. you were clipped in and because you didn't know how to unclip. Yeah, the only reason that I managed to I managed to make it up the climb. And the, I think the only reason I did was because I was I was afraid to unclip because I was still having trouble doing it at the time. And I was like, oh, I can't unclip in the middle of a steep climb. So I just have to I have to find some way to make it up this thing. Um so yeah, that was the only thing that that kept me going there. So with the advent of this road bike and riding a lot more, um, there as beginners, there were bound to have some form of crash and or injury. And uh, I've had my fair share. Um, with the road bike, I said that I had a hard time unclipping at a stop sign and I fell and there were cars and there was a woman who rolled down her windows and asked me if I was okay. So it was pretty embarrassing. But Jason has a more serious I, incident or had a more serious incident with his bike. Well, it's also an embarrassing one because of the way it happened. Um, so I basically was, I basically was doing some sprints up our street, riding around, doing laps around our neighborhood, and and then I, I would I would the lap would consist of you know sprinting up our street and then looping around on some neighbor neighboring streets and coming back around to to where to the beginning of our street and doing another sprint. And, um, so I was on the road, the road that, that where I'm going to make a left turn onto our street, uh, the road that, that I'm on before turning onto our street, uh, it's like a slight downhill. And at the time there was like some, not potholes, but it, the pavement was kind of torn up and, um, I don't really remember what happened other than that. I was. No, I think you said that you were spooked because there was a car behind you. Oh, yeah. So and you, it wasn't like it was honking at you or anything. It, you just got spooked that the car was, you know, was there and you weren't you. You just it just startled you. Yeah. Um, I got startled by a car behind me and um, I think. I sort of, I hit this, you know, bump in the road and kind of lost, you know, felt like the bike was swerving a little bit. I kind of like lost control of it. And then, um, like knee jerk reaction, I grabbed the brakes, but I think I grabbed more of the front brake than the rear brake. Uh, so by doing that, I, I basically flipped myself over the, over the bars and landed on my on my right shoulder um and ended up breaking my collarbone um and i remembered i i had done a workout indoors actually i was riding inside on the trainer and i came upstairs because it was in the basement and jason looked like he was uh he he didn't look good he wasn't he didn't he didn't really say much but i could tell something had happened and he told me that he went over the bars and so he was he wasn't really feeling great to ride his bike back to the house it was it's only like you know straight down it's like a, down the road so he walked his bike back and he was like oh i think i just need to go maybe i'll have to go to an urgent care and so I said, okay, let me shower up and I'll take you to urgent care. And we go to urgent care and they said he had a fractured clavicle, right? 
Um, yeah. Um, uh, and then they, yeah. So then they said I had a fractured clavicle and they referred me to a, an orthopedist to, you know, to get surgery, to set up a surgery for it. Uh, so that it all kind of happened quickly with the, um, you know, the, I think I ended up getting surgery a few days later. Um, and fortunately the, it was by total chance that I got the referred to the surgeon that I, that I was, the surgeon that I was referred to ended up being great. And, you know, to this day, um, you know, I, I've had, that's probably one of the best experience, one of the best, uh, experiences that I've had with a doctor, um, was with this orthopedic surgeon and, um, for anyone local, who is the doctor? His name is, uh, Dr. Robert Dare. Um, and one of his, the office that, that I we went to see him, I think there's multiple offices, but it's, uh, orth orthopedic specialists of Connecticut. And, um, yeah, so I, I went to see him at the, the Brookfield office. And yeah, it was by total chance that I got hooked up with, with him for the surgery. Um, you know, that's just where the, who the urgent care sent me to, but you know, little did I know he's, he, he's actually a great doctor and, uh, he did an outstanding job on, um, repairing my, my collarbone. Cause it's, um, after I healed up from, it, it ended up needing, uh, uh, it ended up needing a, a plate and, and screws to you know hold the bone together while it was healing. Um, but you know, after the bone healed up you know, he, he did a, another procedure to remove the, the hardware. And once I did a little bit of physical therapy to strengthen the muscles in the shoulder, um, right now I, I really can't tell much difference. It, it's, it's almost like I never had, had the, uh, the injury, you know, I have a little bit of a scar there. Um, but you know, I can do, I can do upper body strength training now with, you know, shoulder presses and pull-ups and bench press and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't feel any pain in, you know, in the shoulder, um, or the collarbone. So, you know, it was pretty much, a as close to a hundred percent recovery as, as you can get from, a, a, a from a surgery for, for a fracture. So I was pretty fortunate there. Yeah. So after that, um, we, you know, I think we rode some more and then decided, I think I decided that I would like, I kind of grew out of this, uh, Tommaso bike. And I felt like maybe I'm looking for a more higher end bike. And I don't, I'm not sure if that was a higher end bike the second time around that I got a road bike. So, uh, I looked into Canyon and I actually found that there was a Canyon ultimate that was on sale and they happened to have my size. And I took whatever sizing they had. And I put in my num my, my height and all that. And they spit out this size, which was two XS or two extra small and, uh, decided to go with that bike. That one was a couple thousand dollars. I think it was like on sale for like 2000 something. So it was significantly more compared to the first one and, uh, started to get bike fits on that. And, you know, I don't really want to go into too much details about my first bike fit. It was fine. And I think it was more of the sizing that I had issues with, with that bike. I uh, was limited to, to two XS size comes with a 20, what does that say? 650A wheels or, um, I don't know how to say it. I don't really know what the equivalent is to like a road. I think it's called 650A. 
there's 650B and there's 650A. It's smaller wheel, so it's not the um, it's not the 700C road wheels that most bikes come with today. And I was pretty limited with the tire choices and the wheels if I wanted to swap out wheels. And I really liked the bike, but you know, there were some things that I wish that I had known prior to purchasing it. Um, and also after that, Jason also got the same one, Canyon Ultimate. And uh, those two bikes are now retired down to the trainer. Um, and it, it probably what took, we've used those bikes for, we've ridden those bikes for what, two years, I think, or was it a year and a half? Can't probably, remember. yeah, probably about two years. And then we graduated into electronic shifting, which at first I thought that was going to be uh, a gimmicky thing. And I, you know, we, I was always skeptical of new technology as much as I love technology. Um, I was skeptical about the battery life and, you know, we, I don't want to have run out of battery in the middle of nowhere. And that, that really hasn't happened to us except for one time when we went mountain biking and it was cold and it drained the battery. Um, but yeah, so now we're on the Fazari empires. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have the same, same bike, bike. <laughs> same bike. We also have the same gravel bike, by the way. Right. Yes. And then we also decided to get gravel bikes. Uh, I think it was like a few months after we got the road bike and now this is where we are today. We started with hybrid bikes, getting lost in the cranberry bog and sh shifting poorly to having a bad crash, which unfortunately is not going to be, it isn't the last time these crash stories. Yeah, there will be, place. there'll be more crash stories to come. Yeah. Um, but now we're like competitively racing i mean we're not we're not fast but we are we just started getting into racing really um this this is 20 2024 this is our i would say this is our first year that we're taking racing seriously or more seriously um and we we did a few events last year that we treated as as races or, you know, one of them was, was actually a race of the, the, the Greylock time trial. Um, that was probably the first one that I really took very seriously. Um, but this is our first like full year that we're taking seriously from a racing perspective. Yeah. And we got, uh, we even have a coach and we met her through one of our bike fits. We were first going to this bike shop to get bike fitted with the Canyon Ultimates. The bike shop is now closed and decided, you know, there's another place that does bike fits and we kind of searched up uh, a nearby location in Southbury called Class Cycles. And we met our bike fitter, Andrea Myers. And she's no longer there. Um, but I asked her about coaching. And so this was, <laughs> this could be another story of how I was kind of, it surprised me at who Andrea was, but we decided to get coaching from Andrea. And that was, I think, July last year, we started with her. And we're still with her. And, you know, really happy so far with uh, our my performance, at least when I could say for myself, I, my performance on the bike, you know, having coached, having been coached for less than a year. Yeah. And by the way, she's also a physical therapist and that's come in really, that's been really beneficial for me um, having Andrea as a a coach and physical therapist and bike fitter. It's like, there's a lot of things that kind of go together that she can help us with. Um, 
and in my case, since I've I've had some some different injuries uh, since the time that we've been working with her, you know, she's helped me on the physical therapy side also, and it's it's really great to have a coach who's um, I mean it's it's like a perfect situation when your coach is also your physical therapist because you know from a, a physical therapy perspective um you know what better way to you know to get treated for an injury than if you know, ideally you would anytime you're going for for physical therapy you would ideally want your therapist to know what kind of exercise you do right and um in this in this case Andrea knows exactly what exercises I'm doing on a daily basis because um she prescribes the training so uh so yeah it's like you know it's it's sort of a perfect synergy where um she can pres- prescribe appropriate training if I get injured you know she can prescribe appropriate training to get me through that and um, I, I mean, I, I thought that the coaching was great before I started having injuries, but, you know, this year I, I've had a couple of injuries already, which, you know, we'll probably get into in more detail in later, um, later episodes, but. Yeah. So it's been, um, yeah, we'll talk more about this on, in another episode, but it has been a huge benefit to me to have a coach because it really just does she does all the work with planning exactly how we're going to recover how we're going to build up to a race and some things that I thought I was able to to figure out on my own apparently that's not the case and it's definitely been a huge help to have her on our side yeah, I think that's that's where I was going with it. It's 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 hard to do certain things on on your own with training. I mean, you can sometimes you can figure out, you know, what workouts to do and you know, you could get you know, by doing some some of your own research, you could figure out what what are some effective workouts and you might you might gain some fitness doing that, but the hardest thing about coaching yourself is what do you do when something doesn't go right and you have to adjust the plan um you know if if i had to to coach myself through injuries and everything i almost certainly would be doing things would be doing something wrong that would probably either set me back from a a recovery standpoint or you know, I wouldn't, I'd either be doing too much training and set myself back or I'd be not doing enough because, you know, I'm not, I'm just not sure if like what's appropriate to do in that situation. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that a coach can really, uh, you know, help you with is in guiding you through, um, unusual situations or situations where the training uh, where you have to adjust your training. Well, I guess that's where we're going to end it today. We are close to an hour of this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this. I know it's a lot less structured in terms of usually we write the, um, whenever we do our, our YouTube videos, we usually have it pre-written and read it as the video is playing and this one's a little bit more relaxed, I think, or unstructured. I don't know if it's unstructured, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed listening to this episode. Don't forget to tune in again next time where we will talk a little bit more about our races that we've done so far this year between the hill climb time trials, gravel race and fondos. So tune in for that. And we'll see you again next time.